week during your project, you'll gather task status data from your team and update your project schedule with actual results. Then you'll use the software to identify variances to your plan and develop corrective action to fix the issues. As a final step in the weekly process, you will report progress to the sponsor. As part of the weekly process, you will model options for reporting variances for the sponsor to consider. Let's go over the whole process. First, we need to save the baseline once, right after the sponsor has approved the project schedule. Click on Tools. Then on the drop-down menu, click on Tracking, and then Set Baseline. A new window pops up. Make sure that Set Baseline and Entire Project buttons are selected, and then select OK. Your baseline is now saved. It's like a Polaroid picture of your entire project that has been saved. As you enter changes in actuals, this baseline version of the plan will not change, so we always can compare the original plan to our current schedule. The next thing we do is switch from the Gantt chart view to the tracking Gantt, so we can monitor actual project status versus the baseline. Click on View, then Tracking Gantt. As you can see, the bars in the Gantt chart are now split and the top half is either red or blue, depending on whether a task is critical or not, and the bottom half of the bar is gray. That's the baseline and it won't change. There are a couple more settings we want to change before we enter our status reports. The next thing we do is set the date of the status reports. Go to Project, then Project Information, and change the status date to July 6, 2012 which is the first Friday of our project. Also, take note, just to the left of our status date, we have a forecasted finish date of January 25, 2013. So we click OK. And now in the lower half of the screen, in the task entry screen, right click and select Resource Work. This view is a little bit different from the one you've been working with previously. We still see the resources assigned to the task, their max units, their work, any overtime work we've scheduled, but now we also see the baseline amount of work. And the last two columns are where we'll enter our status report data, actual work and remaining work. We want the team members to give us two numbers, the amount of actual work they've completed and their estimate of the amount of work remaining. With that overview, let's get started entering the status reports. The information we need from the team for every in-progress task is the actual hours worked on the task this past week and their estimate of the hours that will be required to finish the task. That forecast of the remaining hours of work is the key to status reporting because it lets us identify problems when they are small and easier to fix. We've completed the first week of the project and there's only one task that is scheduled to begin work the first week of the project and that's task number four, Veilcrest Management Approves Business and Remodel Plans. I click on that task in the top half of the screen and as you know we see the resources, units, work, baseline work, actual work, and remaining work. As I mentioned before, we'll enter the status report information in those last two columns. The first status report I have is from Martha Hobson, who reports 25 hours complete, so I enter that in the actual work column, with 35 hours remaining. The next status report is from Mac, who reports 40 hours of work with 100 hours remaining. Looking back at the baseline hours of 120, Matt clearly underestimated the amount of his work on the task. Monica Albright reports 40 hours of work and 20 hours remaining. Judd Zambroso and Ren Jambo both report 40 hours of work with 80 hours remaining. After we enter that data, we click on OK and let's see what happened with our tracking Gantt.
The next thing we want to do is make sure to reschedule any work that was scheduled to take place prior to our status date that has not actually started. So we click on Tools, then Tracking, and Update Project. We click on the button Reschedule Uncompleted Work to Start After, and by default the software has already put in our project status date, so we click OK. As you can see, the red bar now runs longer than the gray bar in the upper half of the screen, and that makes sense because Mac increased his estimate of the amount of work remaining. The other thing you see is the start date of tasks 5 and 11 have now been pushed out because of the forecasted delayed completion of task 4. Watch as I zoom out a bit and you can see the ripple effect through the entire schedule. As you can see, all of these tasks have been pushed out slightly.